This is my Rheem Proterra Performance Platinum water heater. Installed it roughly late August, uh, early September 2022. So it's been several months. It worked great. We ran it in the energy saver mode most of the time. Like, as you can see right here, it's an energy saver mode now. You can tell when the heat pump's running because this uh, discharge duct gets cold and it blows cold air out. Well, we ran into a, it worked great. Positive impact on our power bill, uh, no issues. Until a few weeks ago, all of a sudden the heat pump started kicking out. We get these error codes. So I did a little searching, trying to find out what was causing the issue. And uh, I'll get into that here in just a second. One other thing I wanted to point out is when I first installed this, I thought we had enough um, air cushioning in our water supply to prevent uh, an accidental discharge here. I put a, a little beaker there or a paint pail to catch the overflow in case this relieved pressure. And it was doing that. So I added this, uh, this uh, expansion tank here and that solved the problem. But anyway, back to the air codes and the heat pump kicking out. I'll show you what the air codes were and what I had to do about it. Whenever the heat pump would kick out, I get two simultaneous alarm codes. This one, heat pump water heater gen five hardware alarm for the contractor, but I'm, this is an owner do it yourself project, so no contractor. And then simultaneously I get this alarm, A004 compressor shutdown discharge suction trip. And uh, with really no idea of what was causing the problem. The Econet software has this product health routine you could run and it just indicated everything was normal. So that really was of no help. Now every time the alarm codes would go off, I'd get text messages alerting me to the alarm codes. So I had a good record of what was going on and the time that they occurred. What I usually do when I have problems is search the internet and I use Google to search for the error codes on this uh, water heater to look for troubleshooting tips. First one came up was check and clean the evaporator filter. Uh, there wasn't much on it, but I cleaned it anyway. No help. Another thing suggested was this filter keeps a large particle off the uh, evaporator coils, but it's clear, not an issue. Another one was to make sure the evaporator fan is running and that blows air across the uh, evaporator cooling coils or heating coils, depending on what you're talking about. It was running when the heat pump was running, but stopped when the heat pump kicked out. <clears throat> One of the things the internet told me to look for was that fan not turning. Is it behind that out of the screen there? It's a little hard to see here. It's Okay, I overrode that uh, fan noise so you could hear me. Fan was turning, no problems. So I decided to call customer support. They had a national service department number in the manual, this number. They called me, told me to call another number for hybrid water heater support. So I called hybrid water heater support at this number here. It did not take long to reach a technical service agent. She was an expert and taught me through a diagnostic procedure on the hot water heater using the touchpad and decided one of the four thermistors was bad. She said one thermistor is for ambient temperature measurement and was not likely to problem. She did say that she would send me three thermistors and I should go ahead and replace all three. She said there were not any authorized repair services in our area so I could find one and they would reimburse me for the cost or I could replace them myself. She sent an email with a video link on how to replace the thermistors. I got them. I replaced them myself, solved it, and the water heater's working great. But did run into an unusual uh, observation, and I'm going to share that with you. Ream Technical Service provided a video link on how to change the thermistors. Real easy to follow, and that's what I used to, to get started with. And they also provided this image down here below, um, where there's just a rough outline of where the uh, thermistors are located. The actual location in my heat pump was slightly different than this, but they should evaporator thermistor, the discharge thermistor, suction thermistor, 
and ambient thermistor. But uh, as you'll see in my videos, uh, they actually don't look exactly like this, but this gives you an idea of what they're talking about. Let's talk for a minute about what a thermistor is. A thermistor is a type of resistor whose resistance is strongly dependent on temperature, more so than a standard resistor. The word thermistor is a portmanteau of thermal and resistor. A portmanteau is something like, for example, motor and hotel, you end up with motel. Thermistors are divided based on their conduction model. A negative temperature coefficient thermistors have less resistance at higher temperatures. These are widely used as inrush current limiters and temperature sensors like what we're talking about here. Now, positive temperature coefficients uh, thermistors, they have more resistance at higher temperatures. That's not what we're dealing with here. By the way, this information is from Wikipedia and a uh, good article on thermistors. These are the three brand new thermistors they sent me. And to show you what uh, or how a thermistor works, I've taken one of the thermistors I removed from the Ream hybrid hot water heater. That's it right here. Hooked up my voltometer. I've been experimenting a little bit. That's why the reading is moving up a little bit right at the moment. But watch what happens when I grab hold of it and heat it up with my body temperature. 8.5 so, watch it drop. So that's that negative temperature coefficient. Resistance drops with increasing temperature. So that's basically how that works as compared with the electronics to uh, some known information to reference it to a temperature. And that's how they work. Getting ready to change the thermistors on my Ream hybrid water heater. Power's off, you can see the screen's black. So, um, We'll pull the filter and take that top off. Okay, and first thing I'm going to do is pull out this filter. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is remove these screws from the top of this thing. There we go. Go ahead and get them all out. There are some screws on top here. I appear to be holding this down, so I'm going to go ahead and get these out and see what happens. Right there. So we'll take these two out first. So if it comes off, then I'll take a look at that one. Okay. Looks like these screws here are holding it down, one over there on the other side of that. So it looks like I have to take those loose as well. After I got the additional six screws on top out, I set the top over to the side like. Uh, Ream Tech Service uh, video showed, and that worked out okay. Now looking down in here, you can see the thermistors, their connections. I'm gonna get something to take a point them out. Okay, looks like one thermistor is under that. You can see the connection right there. There's another connection there, and that one, I believe, goes over there. So, this apparently is the ambient one. And then there's one down here, it looks like. So we'll, we'll get into that last probably. Okay, I've got to use a small flat blade screwdriver to get these things loose. And it looks like I, I'm gonna have to probably not be able to do this holding the camera. It looks like I can insert it in there and pry that loose. So if you can see that, might not be able to. So we'll give that a try. And I'm going to do them one at a time so I don't get them mixed up. And according to the company video, I might have to take a zip tie loose like right there and some of the others, work the insulation off, and then uh, put all that back when I'm finished. So let me go ahead and try to get these out and we'll see how that goes. Getting the thermocouple out wasn't exactly like what I had thought, but it did work. I was able to push on one end of it and get it out. That's appears to be the gooey mess they talked about in the company video. I'm gonna peel all that off, get to the thermostat clip or thermistor clip and see how that goes. Okay, I got the uh, 
or Mr. Clip off. There it is. It was hard to tell if it was making good contact or not with that copper pipe. But that's that real sticky tape they were talking about. It's exposed. I just left it there. We'll put it back on when I get the new one on. I'm going to use a lens wipe. See if I can get that, that uh, cleaned up before I put all that back together. Okay, I've got a new thermistor clip in. I mean, a new thermistor in the clip. I had to use the uh, needle nose pliers on the uh, thermistor to work it around a little bit, but it wasn't too difficult. Slide the old one out and slide the new one in. So now, I've got to put this back down in there. It can be hard to do and get any kind of video of it, so. Okay, it appears to be in. I'll try to make sure it's making good contact and I'll put that tape on, put the insulation back. I'm gonna have to use two hands. Can't video this. Okay, I got this other one back here. Looks like it's right under that zip tie there. So I'm gonna get that off first. Get it out, change it, and put it back. Okay, possible issue here. I couldn't tell when I took it off if the clip, if the old thermistor came off this smaller diameter pipe or this larger one that's connected here. I replaced it, put the new clip on down there in a clean piece of pipe because that clip fits the larger diameter pipe better than the small one. So it'd be interesting to see if, the, if it had been installed right over that joint. That could be an issue, not sure. We're gonna try this and see how it works. Technician on the phone told me not to replace the ambient one, which is that one. That's probably not the problem. It looks like the other one is very way down there. It'll be a little tricky getting to that one. We'll give it a try. Okay, I cleaned that spot up, that pipe. Well, lens wipe. And I'll put this back on there. Really hard to do this and use my phone camera at the same time, but okay. I've got it on. Should be a relatively clean spot on that pipe. So that should help, I would think. This is not focusing too well. That's where it is. Of course, you can't see the thermistor from this angle. It's on the back side of that pipe. But we'll try it. I didn't have any zip ties or uh, I haven't touched the insulation. I think I'll add some tape there, but use black vinyl electrical tape. A little hard to see down there place of the zip ties and that sticky stuff. This I didn't really touch, that's just like that. I got black tape down there, some black tape on this one and down below. Let me show you a problem I ran into. The evaporator thermistor, I couldn't see it when I first took it apart. It was clipped on somewhere in here. You can see the sticky tape right there, I'm not sure exactly where. When I put it back together, I opened this insulation up a little better and saw um, that you know, this pipe here is larger diameter than that one. So I'm not sure where the original one was attached. It also, both pipes appear to be aluminum. The thermistor clip fit better on this larger one, so I put the new one back on the larger pipe after cleaning it up a little bit with an alcohol wipe. And uh, so I think that contributed to what appears to be galvanic corrosion on that particular thermistor. That certainly would have uh, been a problem. So I sent this information back to... Um, Ream Technical Service uh, to see if they can uh, see if they find it useful. Just wanted to share that with anybody working on this. You might want to know that. You now the galvanic corrosion you get with copper in contact with aluminum, usually it's aluminum, the more reactive metal that gets corroded. So that could be residue of aluminum on that thermistor. Not sure. Uh, so it just appeared this way. I'm going to vacuum out the dust, put it together, and see if it works. 
After replacing the thermistors in our hybrid uh, electric hot water heater, it uh, has been working great. I really like it. It has a positive impact on our power bill. It's relatively quiet and so forth. I also passed on the my concerns about the possible galvanic corrosion on one of the thermistor locations to the uh, Ream Technical Service. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like the video and check out our other links and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you.